So now it's time to do some pre-assembly. This is the spot where you're test fitting everything. Just to make sure one final check that everything is good to go. You don't need to send parts back to get reworked. <laughs> got the block painted and prepped and all ready to go. So the first clearance we're going to check is our main bearings. You want to make sure that the bearings that have the holes in them go in the block or these are the upper halves because they are on the top side. Our engine is upside down. Seems like the bottom but it's actually the top because it's inverted. Before we do that we're going to clean them with some mineral spirits. We're also going to clean the block again as we go. You'll notice on the block there's a little key and that's where the key on your bearing is going to go. And just kind of seat it all the way down trying to make sure it's flush on both sides. So now that we got all the upper half bearings in there, now it's time to install our crank. When we install it, we're going to do it dry because we're testing the clearances. So we have to be really careful not to rotate the crank. Now we'll install the bearings and the main caps. Once again, we'll clean the surfaces of the cap as well as the bearings. One odd thing about this number one main cap is you'll see there's a keyway on both sides over here. And on number two, there's only one keyway. It's just over here on this side, the side that doesn't have the number. The number is over here. When you install these, you want all the numbers to be on the driver's side. These wings should be pointing towards the rear of the engine. So this keyway is going to be over here on this side, but on the upper bearings, the keyway is on the driver's side. The keyways don't line up with each other. They're on opposite ends. I'm just kind of set these in here for now. I'm not going to actually put them in place until we put our plastic gauge on here. The number five cap is the weirdo. This one actually goes this way. It's the only one with the wings pointed forward and the number stamped on the passenger side of the engine. Goes in right there like that. So now we'll go ahead and install our plastic gauge. And when you install the plastic gauge, you want it to be about the width of your bearing because we want to make sure that our tolerances are even all the way across. And we'll install our bolts and just hand tight for now because all this is doing is keeping that cap centered so we can tap it down with the mallet. Just use a dead blow hammer to kind of tap it down into place. And it should go without saying, but when you put the plastic gauge on there, you don't want to put it over an oil hole. The number four is the hard one to get to. So if you need to use some needle nose pliers or something to kind of drop it down in there, just don't squeeze too hard because then you'll get a false reading. So now that these main caps are hand tight and we got all our plastic gauge in place, it's really important not to turn your crank because that'll ruin the plastic gauge. We'll torque these down according to our sequence and we'll start with the inner bolts. This is a 13 millimeter socket and 15 foot pounds for the first pass. Now we gotta go an additional 80 degrees. So we'll get our angle finder here and do the same sequence. Now these outer bolts get torqued to 15 foot pounds, same sequence. And this is a 15 millimeter socket. And then on our angle gauge, this is gonna go to 51 degrees. Not 50, 51. So according to GM, you do not need to install the side bolts at this time because they have no bearing on the torque setting. But we're going to go ahead and install them anyways, just for kicks and giggles. There's a lot of debate on whether or not you can reuse the old bolts. Everything I've read says, yes, you can, but you have to put sealant on it. 
If you're using your old bolts, just put some RTV around the end and this will prevent any oil leaks. I was planning on reusing my old side bolts, but the machine shop tossed them out. Apparently, when you go to the machine shop, you have to tell them to not throw anything away. So I had to go buy some new side bolts. And these are the ones that I got. These are just the Summit Racing brand, but they look dead identical to the original bolts. And these are our Summit part number 910230. And these will get torqued down to 18 foot pounds. We'll do this in the same tightening sequence we did for the main caps. Okay, so now everything is torqued down the way it's supposed to be. Now we can remove all of these bolts and check our plastic gauge. And to get these off of here, you don't want to move them around a whole lot because, again, you don't want to ruin your plastic gauge. Best way to do it is just to get a couple of long extensions and slowly kind of start to work it up until it comes out. And then you'll get your plastic gauge gauge here. And just kind of stick it up on there and see which one it matches closest to. So it looks like we're just over 2,000, just under 15, probably roughly about 16 or 17. So on a stock to mild performance motor, you want these main bearing clearances to be somewhere between 0.8,000 or 2.1,000, somewhere in there. So 15, 16, 17 is just about perfect because that's right sort of in that middle range. So now we'll do the number four cap. That one is about the same, it's bigger, then the two thou, but smaller than 15. So again, we're within spec. Keep moving on. Number three. This one actually might be closer to 19, 18 or 19, somewhere in there. That one actually looks a little closer to 15. It's probably 16 or 17. Good on that one. Same thing, bigger than 2,000, smaller than 15. So it's probably 16, 17 or 18, somewhere in there. Good to go. So now we'll have to clean this up again. So scrape it off with one of your sharpest booger hooks. So now we can remove the crank so that we can get some oil on those bearings to check our run out. And then we can actually install the crank before we do the pistons. But before we do that, I'm actually gonna install the camshaft because you have greater access to the lobes on the cam with the crank out and I can put more oil on those before I get into the final assembly. The cam I'm going to use is this Sloppy Stage 2 cam from Elgin Pro Stock. And this has significantly more lift than the stock cam, which means I'll need to upgrade my springs and even go to the hardened push rods. And obviously before we install this, we're going to need to give it a thorough cleaning because they caked the oil on this thing, obviously because they don't want it to rust. I'm going to just squirt it with some mineral spirits and wipe it down, lube it up and install it in the block. We're also gonna to wanna to go back and give the block another little cleaning, especially these cam bearings. And just a reminder too, you also want clean hands, so use new gloves. And when we put the oil on these cam bearings, we're gonna use a brush and not our finger. You can use assembly lube for this, or you can use engine oil. While we're at it, I'm also gonna sauce up these surfaces for the main cap bearings. So what you wanna do is you wanna lube up all of the lobes, basically up to the second journal. Remember, oil's cheap compared to doing a full rebuild, so sauce it up pretty good. You want to take your time, do everything possible not to nick any of these lobes or journals or the cam bearings. Once you get to the second journal, now we can lube up the next set of lobes. Be careful your camshaft doesn't fall out because it's just sitting on a film of oil. See how it's just floating in there and wants to fall out. This last little bit can be kind of tricky, but this is the benefit of doing it now while you can reach inside of here. So you can either put some longer bolts in the front of the cam, or you can actually stick a longer extension into the center hole. There we go. 
So now we want to get our retaining plate on there. This is just sitting there. So you want to be super careful because it could slide out either direction and land on some of those lobes, which you do not want. So I've got a new cam retainer plate. This is Mr. Gasket model number 61220G. This is one of those might as well parts because these little rubber seals, over time they kind of get flat and then you're gonna lose oil pressure. Plus it was only like 20 bucks. So we'll want to clean our surface here. Hang on your cam so it doesn't fall out. We're gonna lube up this thrust surface right here. And then you wanna also put a little dab of lubricant on the rubber gasket part right here. Now we can install this. And this uses the T40 Torx bit and these will get torqued down to 11 foot pounds. So now the camshaft can't go forward. It can still fall out the back though. So what I might do is install the timing sprocket on here just temporarily just to hold it so it can't fall backwards. There we go. So now that cam can't go anywhere. All right, now we can install the crank bearings. To check your crank run out, what that means is to make sure that your crank is straight, that it doesn't need any more machine work. Mine was balanced at the machine shop, so I'm pretty confident that it's straight, but you do wanna check this because this will throw your engine apart from the inside out if it's not right. So I got the number five bearing and the number one bearing installed. So we're gonna lube those up and then we'll drop the crankshaft in here. We've got our dial indicator here on the number three journal. This is where the thrust bearing rides and it's about at zero. We'll just kind of crank this over a few times and we'll see what we got. You want to take note of the highest number. Another oil hole coming up. So it looks like we're within a half a thou, which is bang on exactly where it needs to be. You'll also want to check the rear main seal surface. Anything over two thousandths on this is unacceptable. And as you can see, it's barely moving. So we're probably within one thou, which is excellent. With just these inner bolts torqued down to 15 foot-pounds before we do the angle, we're gonna set the thrust bearing. And to do that, you're gonna hit it backwards and then you're gonna hit it forwards. You always wanna end with it in the forward position. And now we can do our 80 degrees. Now we'll torque these outer studs to 15 foot pounds. And once again, these get 51 degrees. And it spins free. We're good. So now we can check our end play on the crankshaft. And to do that, you're gonna need a pry bar and a dial indicator. What you wanna do is you wanna pry this either all the way forward or all the way backwards, and then you'll set your dial indicator to zero. And then you wanna watch your dial indicator as you move it forward and backwards and see how far it goes. So we're at about maybe a little less than two thousandths. And the specs on this is 0 0.0015 to 0 0.0078. So we're at 0 0.002 at the most. And that's well within specs. So we're good. All right, so the inner and outer main cap bolts are torqued down. I marked them with a paint pen just so I remember that I did torque those. And now we'll put the side cap bolts in there. And these ones need some RTV. You don't really need it on the threads, just on the flange. And then we'll hand tighten these and then we gotta wait a little while before we torque them down so that this RTV will start to rubberize a little bit. 
All right, so now it's time to check our piston bearing clearance. But before we do any of that, we're gonna clean the motor one more time. We're gonna wipe down all those rod journals on the crank, and we'll wipe down all the bearings on the piston rods. And we're also gonna wipe down all the cylinder walls so when we drop our pistons in there, we're making sure that everything is clean. When you're checking your rod bearing clearances, it's really important that your crank doesn't turn and that your rods don't twist side to side as you're tightening the bolt. So there's a couple of things that you gotta do. First thing is you have to lock your crankshaft in place. Best way to do that is to install your flywheel. And then if you've got one of those flywheel locking tools, that's the best way to do it. Or you can do like I'm doing it if you don't have one of those tools and just use a screwdriver and hope and pray it doesn't turn. Because if the crankshaft turns or if your rod journals twist, it's gonna mess up your plastic gauge. And we're gonna start with the front two pistons. So this will be the front journal on your crank. So you're gonna wanna turn your crank so that that journal is at bottom dead center, which when the engine's upside down is at the highest point. Before I put the pistons in the engine, I wanna put my bearings in there. And just like on the main bearings, you'll notice these tangs right here on the bearings and the rod itself. So you just gotta line up that tang and then just kinda of push it in there. I'm trying to get it as flush as possible on both sides. All the way seated, just like that. Same thing on the cap, just getting it flush, just like that. And again, you wanna install these dry with no oil on them because this is just test fitting. Another reason why you don't wanna spin your crank. And you also will wanna be really, really careful that you don't nick these rod journals. We'll be sure also to put these in there with this notch facing towards the front of the engine. Yours might have an arrow on it. If it doesn't have a notch or an arrow, then consult the manufacturer. Those ones might be universal, they can go either way. In which case you wanna look at your rods. Your rods will mate with the rounded side facing each other so this is the number one and remember we're upside down so number one is over here that will be your driver's side we're not going to torque these down yet until we get both rods on there I'm just kind of get it tight so that plastic gauge doesn't move Now we have both piston rods installed. We need to keep these from twisting as you're doing this because again, any little twistage will give you a false reading. So to prevent it from twisting, we're actually gonna use our feeler gauges. We're gonna stick a couple of these in between the rods to keep them stationary. Okay, so I got the old number 12 and number 13 in here. That's gonna give it enough stability so these don't twist as I'm torquing them down. And these get torqued down to 15 foot pounds on the first pass. Now the angle on these bolts depends on what they are. Some of the old, old style bolts are 60 degrees. The newer ones, the book says 75, but as of 2021, the angle is 85 degrees. So we're gonna go another 85 degrees on these. Make sure we keep a couple of threads on those so this doesn't come falling out and just kind of push it out like that and you're good so now we'll gently take this out of here be careful we don't mess up our gauge so from gm the tolerances on these rod cap bearings can be anywhere from 0.9 thousandths to three thousandths that's slightly bigger than two thou but not as big as the 15 i'd say we're probably around 19 18 or 19 somewhere in there so that's what the spec measure the other one same thing on this one it's slightly bigger than two thou definitely less than 15 or about 18 on that one so with the spec we're good to go now we just have to repeat that same process on all other six pistons and rods so all these rod bearings measure right around 18, 19, 20, somewhere in there. So that's perfectly fine with me. That's within spec and that's right about where I want them. That's gonna do it for a pre-assembly check. Now we're gonna move on to final assembly, which we're gonna do at another time because it's getting late and it's crazy windy outside. So I'm gonna go home and make sure my house is still there. Subscribe, like, comment, see you next time.